Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special holiday edition of the Timelines Talks Citation Advice Show. Now, we have a couple rosters on tap for you today, but first, don't forget to take advantage of our holiday sale. From now until the end of the month, you too can order one of these personalized videos for the half-off price of only $99.99. So head on over, head on over to TimelinesTalks.com and enter the promo code Fact of the Matter for some big savings. Now, let's go ahead and get started first with Eat a dick. <laughs> with a roster from the big ticket, aka Florian Greer. We see him sometimes in Timelines Talks chat. He says, I'm playing daily, buying monthly card and campaign. I've been playing for three years now, and overall, I guess my biggest target is to improve voyages to perform more consistently. Mostly, as with most, I think men and command is my weak spot. Shuttles I'm not much worried about or bothered about. So we have your top ten list on the screen here. I trust Idol will we'll put that on the screen for us. Uh, and coming in at number one, I think we all have the consensus that Tactical Officer Neelix is your go-to guy here. Now, um, he has great voyage power. He, uh, we look through your med because, like you said, that you think that's one of your weak spots and we concur, but you have very few uh, quality med options to cite. And Tech Neelix, even though it's his med secondary, um, that's about as good as we can find to site up. Never mind that he's just a great Voyager overall. And he's someone that I've I've had um, since his debut event. I burned a whole lot of requisition shuttles to get him because I believed in his Voyager bona fides. And they are still great. I mean, for a while, he was the only crew who had four top ten triplets. So in a lot of different sort of puzzle piece situations, he slots in and in as one of the best options. Um we have a couple sec options for you, but I think that med secondary really bumps him up the list. I, if you compare him to someone like Niners Esri, a, again, another quality sec crew with a, a little splash of med, you'll see that in a lot of Voyage metrics, he's above her, and it's because of the order of skills. So that secondary med really does um, prove out in the long run. <laughs> yeah, and, and continuing the theme of improving sec bases, the sex sci is a consistently under underrepresented uh, triplet for a lot of people, mostly because there's not a lot of quality crew out there. It kind of goes Gary Seven, and then you've got activated Dodge, and then you kind of got a load of crap. So, <laughs> without any further ado, it's the tier one hero, the man among men, Gary Seven. You, it seems almost kind of obvious. Like, I know it was for me when I, I got him out. Like, what I was like, should I really throw like four sights on him? This guy never gets events. But the fact of the matter is, there Same. are no names like Gary Seven. Um, if you're worried about anti matter traits, he has like wonderful ones like Hero, Undercover Operative. I still, I'm still riding high on that Hero Omega. I feel that that's going to happen. Um, his bases are not like absolutely incredible, but guess what? The Gauntlet bona fides speak for themselves. You will see maybe not walls of him, but whenever you do see him, you're going to be like, mm, I best not attack into him. And I'm pretty sure he's elite, if not top five, I think maybe top two Voyager still. Like, yep. I believe with the last update, he moved back up over Brain Cure for number two. There you go. Back, where, back into the supremacy spot where he's been resting for so long. And that's the thing, it's like, even as bonuses uh, jockey back and forth, over time, you really want to invest in the creme de la creme of Voyagers. People whose, like, their star never wanes, because they can add Voyager 160, they can add Voyager 80, they can add Voyager 55. But the top 20 names, there is not a lot of movement there. Gary Seven is going to be as good now in about two, three years. And even then, he's still going to be probably the number two, number one, number three, sex high Voyager. In fact, that's something that we collected historical data on recently to see how often do crew at different Voyage ranks um, drop? How often do they introduce crew with stronger Voyage power? And the top five crew historically move at a, at a glacier's pace, especially Gary, who debuted at number two, he's still there two years later, even with a little bit of shuffling with collection bonuses and such. So if you cite him now, even in the portal, uh, I know I personally wouldn't mind duping him for voyages. And even if even if you don't dupe him, he's still going to be in service for probably the next three plus years. So very safe investment. Big, who do we have at number three? Yeah, uh, another name that's pretty near the top of the voyage ranks and this one ticks a lot of boxes, and that's Determined Paris. 
uh, the biggest one is the fact that you've already got a lot of stars on him. So it would it's less of an investment in citations or honor or however you choose to do it. Uh, but another way to improve your voyages, apart from finding your best crew and signing them, is getting some of your stat boosting collections uh, under control and getting some of those uh, thresholds where you can boost all of the stats of all of your crew. And one of the toughest ones to complete is the the diplomat collection, the New Life and New Civilizations collection. And it, Paris is going to be among your best options to cite to get down the road to doing that. And, you know, he is in the in the teens in Voyage rank, so he may drop a little faster than some of these other names, but he's still going to be up there for quite a while. So that's sort of our top three for you. And there's a pretty clear delineation in our mind between their voyage potential and the next names on this list. Not to say that they're not worth it, but uh, those three are probably the ones we would focus on first. So um, let's take a look at a number of engineering names. Stars, why don't you start us off? So there's going to be a bit of a recurring theme here with the, with the crew that I've chosen, and that's, yes, it's very tempting to zig when others zag, but at the other time, there is conventional wisdom in this game. And that stuff like you know, always take Burnham. Um, Mary Jean Luc Picard is going to be in every gauntlet you ever ever run. And number three, if Leonardo da Vinci is on your roster, you should finish him. He has a, a really like nice little bevy of traits, like prodigy, innovator, cultural figure. He's in two collections that could easily get um, get expanded. He was the very first Engmed crew, and he's held up extraordinarily well. I think he's still Voyager Seven, and he's even though they've been like slotting in names all around, like Medic Jack Reno and Cheesecake Seven, and even someone that you might have on your own roster, like um, Dr. Van Gogh. The this is a name that is rock solid, dependable. He'll pick up events here and there, but he will almost always make voyages, whether it's because of an antimatter trait that trips on a bonus. Or just because, hey, I need a little bit of med, I need a little bit of top-up eng, I need a strong secondary here, just throw them in there, you will not regret it. And having two stars also takes a little bit of the uh, little bit of the hurt off of finishing off. Big who do you have up next? Yeah, and then engineering names. Yeah, well, another avenue is uh, engineering and security. Um, and another big name near the top of the voyage ranks is, uh, is Triple Herder Scotty. Uh, now I've, I kind of paired him off on your roster with, uh, determined Janeway because they both hit a lot of very similar notes. Uh, I mean, Janeway's going to be a further down, uh, the voyage ranks, but you also have them at four or five stars. So that would be less of an investment to get not quite as good, but quite a bit of, uh, production on your voyages out of them. And of course, Janeway would have. Uh, other options. I mean, her her traits are quite good and going to be a lot uh, as far as uh, events and things like that. But you'll find uh, both of them would be, again, talking about uh, uh, stat boosting collections, their jury riggers. That's going to be another thing, depending on where you are in those collections. I don't really know. But yeah, either of them would be good options. It's just a question of whether you want to spend more of your honor on one card and get a bigger boost or, uh, you know, be a little more thrifty and uh, spend in just the one site and getting, you know, maybe 90, 95% of, of what that other card is. So next up on the list, we have um, the Harmaster Koloth. Now we took a little break from our uh, security woes, but uh, there's a reason he's on this list. So big one, why don't you regale us about his pros? Well, I mean, it's another one just at the, the top of the ranks. Now, we we did talk about uh, when we were doing the prep uh, before this, how the Harmaster Koloth and Determined Paris are very, very similar cards. Uh, and, you know, do you want to double up on that when honor and citations are so precious? But in, in the end, you're never going to go wrong by citing up the crew that are at the very, very top of your voyage ranks. Because even if it's not 
uh, you know, a security uh, diploma, uh, diplomacy voyage, these cards will still come up pretty often as kind of off-skill boosters to just kind of boost your uh, overall voyage ranks and make those voyages go from, you know, nine minutes, I mean, nine hours and 30 minutes to nine hours and 45 minutes and so on and so on and so on as you add these crew to your uh, to your roster. And the cumulative effect is where you get those consistent 10 hour voyages that we all know and love. Uh, so next up to sort of like return to uh, the back to our theme of engineering crew is uh, one that uh, Otto and I maybe maybe disagreed a little bit on, but I, I really quite like uh, Amelia Earhart. She's been in the portal for ages. I believe she's like two or three years old now. Still an extremely strong Voyager. I think she's in the um, the sort of the mid forties. Lots of fun little traits. Like I could see spy or even prisoner, cultural figure. The, these are all ones that feel like they are just relevant enough and just fun enough that they could trick for megas. She's a really strong eng, eng base, and she's teamed with a really nice um, command base as well for a little bit of versatility on voyages. Um, eng command isn't quite as dead as say sec med or med command but on a lot on, on a lot of people's rosters it's people like braxton power gap and then some real trash and of, if you can say a lot of things about amelia Earhart, for instance her episode is not great but she is still bringing her a game to any kind of voyage you want to slot her in for yeah and in fact as i look uh, through your voyage pairs just now i see that engine command is on the bottom half so uh, i think she'll help out quite a lot there now, that's sort of the list of crew that we all can agree on, and we thought it would be fun now to give you all our individual take on a crew that I think we we know that you could use, but we had a hard time convincing uh, the other two here. So we're all going to go round robin. We picked a crew or two, and we have to try to talk to you into it. So, Stars, why don't you lead us off? All right, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw myself on the sword here, and I'm going to say that I probably have the hardest job here, which is convincing someone to cite Dr. Edward LaForge. Um, <coughs> now, the good doctor is no one's idea of an event um, event name, but the simple fact of the matter is, and yeah, there you go, that's number two for you. Um, you mentioned Med Command as a particular weakness for you, and if you want to target Med Command, there are only so many ways you can go about it. There are a few, not even top shelf, like compared to other pairings, but, you know, the best of this pairing, like Dr. Pollard or Reverend Flox, which weren't options. But Edward LaForge is one of those odd instances of, this is a card that is quite good now and will only depreciate as time goes on. And if you want to target Med Command, you have to sort of go and think about this strategically. Do you want to cite him now and get the most of his voyage potential as it is, and maybe he'll fill in a few voyages down the road? Or do you want to leave your med command stagnant in the hopes that maybe some better name will come along in, right down the road in the next six months, which, spoiler, it probably won't, and think, well, now I can add stars to it the voyage maybe a year and a half down the road when he's Voyager 160, 170, and you're thinking, eh, you know what, this is a card that I went for in an event, and I, if you have any intention of finishing, you might as well do it right now while he's still good. So my recommendation for you is sort of a twofer. You have a Cayman Picard sitting there at 1-5 and Homesteader Janeway at 3-5. Now they both have the same skill set and they both, um, more importantly, have that secondary med, which is what we're trying to target. Now their voyage power is not quite as prodigious, but they have the events to fall back on which you said you're not very fussed with, but you may find that in two years' time when they stop making so many voyages, it's still nice to have them there uh, to fill shuttles uh, and whatnot. I believe they're both not in the portal right right yet either. So you have the extra stars on, on Janeway, um, but Picard has a little better voyage power. I think if you picked one or the other, they would be able to help you immediately with that med secondary um, and then down the line with events. Now, to your credit, you have pretty much... <coughs> picked the bones clean on your account with the the number of good med crew you can cite so um i mean we all have that problem even though you you picked the best you could and, and cited up they still in terms of overall power lag behind simply because of the you have too many other options in the game for uh, the more popular skills so 
If you're okay with citing an event crew, um, especially ones that aren't in the portal, Cayman Picard and Homestead or Janeway, both offer something very similar. And then uh, for me, one, one thing that I noticed pretty quickly at uh, looking over your roster is that you really don't have a lot in the way of arena slash skirmish crew. And we're all big advocates of uh, taking full advantage of skirmish events just for generating resources or farming for galaxy events. There's just there's so many benefits to having a stable skirmish crew that you know will produce results every time. And anything you can do to, to lessen the grind and make the battles faster is just going to help you. So the best options that you have are... Obviously, Garth of Izar, you've got at uh, four or five already. And then Roar Penthe Commandant, which has that same 400% uh, instant damage as uh, as Captain Killy and Fury Kess all to go with the plus 10 uh, attack bonus. And it would only cost you one, star, uh, one site to fuse up Garth, um, but then uh, Roar Penthe Commandant, would, you would get uh, that attack, bigger attack bonus because the... Garth is only plus eight, and then uh, Rorapente is plus ten. So if you at all, and I, I think you should, uh, want to do better in your uh, skirmishes, I would recommend citing one or both of those crew. So there we have your top ten, or rather top thirteen, with a couple forks on the road. Maybe you want to pick uh, one crew or the other, but thank you for submitting your roster, the big ticket, and hopefully you'll find this useful. Now, moving on, we have t the top man. I'm sorry, just top man. Too many of those uh, in this one. Top man. <laughs> top, top man. Top man. And he writes in saying, I've had a great time in the game. I've never worried about top event scores because real life means I don't generally have the time to even get to thresholds for each event. My lone time actually pushing in the last event was to get my final copy of Leonardo da Vinci as the 400,000 threshold reward a few events ago, and he's been a big part of my voyages since then. However, that doesn't mean that I don't want to try and improve on my events, as my voyages are generally going well. At this point, I would like some advice on who would be the best cards to focus on for siding up for event improvements specifically, and voyages secondary. I seem to follow the Captain Idle leveling strategy. If you're unfamiliar, that means you don't level your crew at all. As I have great cards that I haven't really gotten to yet that I know would be worthwhile and I'm feeling a bit paralyzed about starting the process of a new level up rather than finishing off some super rares. As for favorite characters, Discovery is at the top of my mind right now as I think it's been a great season. Happy to be able to add another Burnham always, but I think my favorite character in the show is Mir Giorgio. Terrans are fun and I'm always shocked that someone as legendary as Michelle Yeoh is in Star Trek. I have about 200000 in honor that I'm saving up, and hopefully we'll have lots of sites in the near future. Thanks for the great show. Out of all the options, this is the only premium Timelines talk show that I listen to, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, thank you for the detail, <laughs> Top Man, because Top Man, because as we go through, um, whenever we find ourselves unable to decide on a crew, we go, we go back to, well, what did they say they wanted on their roster? So that focus is very important. Uh, number one on the list is a name. When we did this citation advice show initially, there was one name that uh, kept popping up in everyone's roster. That was Medic Jet Reno. If you had her and you hadn't finished her, go do it. It seems this time around with our last video and this one, Determined Paris is the big man on campus. Big, tell us why. Well, uh, first and foremost, it's because you already have him at four or five uh, stars. So, again, it's just... Any time that you have as kind of a tiebreaker between similar crew that do similar things or are similarly ranked in your mind, then, you know, spending less citations, spending less honor is going to be a tiebreaker because that way you can use that on other crew and improve more and just have the rising tide lift all the boats at the same time. But again, you know, like we touched on with uh, with Big Ticket, uh, Diplomat Collection, big voyager um you know he is a pretty decent event name uh not as big as you know some of the other you know your kirks and janeways uh what have you but still very very solid in his own and uh just an overall 
great card. So <laughs> if you can spend one citation and get all of those benefits, then you do it. And number two on your list, um, we have Fury Cass, and she's sitting there at one star. And like we talked about with the big ticket, you right now have no one on your roster for that big six-second um, arena skirmish damage. No Garth, no Killy, no Ropenta Commandant. Um, and so speaking from experience, I think I've said this recently, out of all the crew I have on my roster, not, on this account, I only have a handful of golds, but Fury Kess still stands out as uh, the most useful. And I crunched some numbers because we've, we've been talking recently a lot about speed up and 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 the skirmish battles and, and such. Now, if you're going for a top 1,000 to get the new crew each day, killing ships at um, six seconds with someone like Fury Kess versus eight seconds, it doesn't sound like a lot, especially with speed up, it's only a fraction of a second. But that adds up to 13 plus minutes for each skirmish if you're ranking to get the, the gold. Now, you said specifically that you don't have a lot of time to rank in these events. So out of all these crew who can make sort of a tangible, um, real-life difference in terms of time save, Fury Kess would be one. Now, besides just being uh, the great arena hammer, uh, you would cite her up for the attack damage. She's also all right on voyages. Uh, now, I believe she's ranked 160 something, but the skill set is primo. Um, all the combinations of it, I think, are in your bottom half of your voyage power. And she does have enough niche traits that she will get events from time to time. But with the rate of skirmishes increasing, I mean, almost every mega has one and a half skirmishes, and then you get one in between megas as well. You can think of it as an event crew who will get a bonus every three to four weeks, which in terms of the real life time save, I think you'll find a big help. But now if you want to focus on events, if events are gonna be your thing, there is one name that is above all other names in the game as far as events and faction events especially, and that is James Tiberius Kirk. And you have a prime uh, Kirk variant already sitting at three of five on your roster in Wrathful Kirk. And anybody that has had, <laughs> yeah, even though he's standing up, still a great card. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, Security is security and command are never going to be uh, short for seats on in Kirk faction events. I mean, the event we just had uh, with the repeat for uh, Gangster Kirk, uh, Rathful Kirk was way, 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 way useful on that, and will continue to be. And he's no slouch on voyages either. Uh, you know, still in the low 30s in voyage rank, and so he'll still be up there for quite a while. And he has that engineering tertiary, which will help him find seats that other Kirks won't or other security command cards won't. And also has some, some traits that may have not been tapped to their full potential as far as events go. I mean, there still could easily be uh, explorer events or, you know, if they really want to get esoteric, they might have a marksman event uh, somewhere in there and you never know. But if you're wanting to go after events, you want to side up your Kirks and it's really just that simple. Yeah, no, when we were looking at the order of these crew, we noticed that you have a four of five. By the time you see this, it should be a five of five Rura Pente Kirk. Uh, and he's the number two Kirk sec base. We said, now, how much does him having that Kirk at five of five, does that ding Wrathful Kirk? And we said, no, not at all. Because you're never going to have a Kirk faction event where there's only one security seat and you got to go, oh, I guess my other five of five is useless. No, you're going to use both quite a lot. And uh, Kirk's flexibility on voyages is, is a big plus there as well. Now, next on the list, uh, I have Prisoner Kim at one of five. And now you did say events, primary, voyage, secondary. So this one may be the first one to sort of buck that trend, but his voyage efficacy, the, the, the overall power plus skill set makes him the best voyage candidate you have to cite on your roster. Um, he's also going to be, as I look down the list, one of only two engineering bases that we recommend. And when we look at the, the number of eng crew, big eng crew that you have, you really only have determined Janeway. So in terms of non-bonus opportunities, 
you know, that, that's going to be up to the individual event. Something like a data event, maybe you'll have a lot more end seats, but he blows it out of the water so easily in voyages that that really bumps him up the list. Now, it helps that Kim is, he's, he's not a Kirk event name. I know it's hard to follow Kirk on the list, but he's had four events this year alone. Two of them had faction components, so that's sort of picking up pace a little bit. Um, and I think as an all-around package, in terms of, especially in terms of how long he's going to be uh, voyaging for you. I think it's just a no-brainer. Plus, he's not in the portal. Oh, actually, <laughs> I forgot about this. So up next we have, we're going to try a little <laughs> head-to-head action because we had these two names here and we couldn't figure out where to rank them because they each have pluses and minuses. Uh, so with your stated goals of, of events primarily in mind, we have a couple crew for you, Homestead or Janeway at three of five. And Picard, of, Picard in number one at one of five. So Big is going to extol the virtues of Homesteader, and Stars will rebut, and we'll go back and forth until someone, you know, cries and admits defeat. So Big, why don't you start us off with Homesteader Janeway? Well, I, I feel like I've uh, turned into the uh, the Stars person. I mean, not, not you, Stars, but the, uh, the taking the crew that have Stars on them already. But uh, this is another case where you've got the three of five, so that you're already you're saving on and you're saving citations by taking Homestead or Janeway, and Homestead and Janeway in in particular is a huge reliable faction event name, and so you're never going to go wrong citing up Janeways if events are one of your primary goals. And uh, she's also a, a stout voyager, an uncommon skill set for Janeways. Uh, I think she's the only Janeway with men. And I may be wrong about that, yeah, but I think she's the only. Campus. Oh, there's a second. Which one? Nuss. Nuss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The one she's was not in the portal yet. She was a six pack only. So I'm not sure that's going to terribly influence most people's. Yes, you are technically right. The best kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I think uh, Homesteader is going to fill a lot of niches that other other Janeways couldn't. And uh, again, save an honor for the next card up the list. Now, I, I'm going to go on the offensive here, and I'm going to be aggressive. Okay. And I'm going to ask a simple question, which is, yes, you could easily save yourself 100k on her and, you know, go for a homestead of Janeway. But why would you spend 100k on her less when you could just go for the best option rather than a pretty good one? Picard number one is the number one side base in the game. They don't shuffle these out very, very often. And before him, in terms of, you know, this kind of skill set for Picard events, it was Mambo Picard, who was significantly worse base-wise. But let me put this into perspective for you. If you have any experience with using, say, Professor Sato or Bones McCoy or any number, or maybe even Ardal Raf, any of these number one end bases, any faction, any galaxy in which you don't have a, a wide bonus pool, they are event crew. They may not have the big sparkly bonus, but they are actually event crew. And for a number one Psybase, where I think you know, your other options are someone like Science Officer Spock, who's a great, a great name, or Dr. Anne Mulhole, not so much. Like it, it runs the gamut. But Picard hits a nice sweet spot between being an excellent voyage. I still believe he's like a top 10 or top 15. He's Picard, who has still got an ongoing show with another two seasons left to coming. He is unparalleled in terms of sheer raw power. And yes, you can go with, oh, well, there's like a 30-point, um, only a 30-point lead. Guess what? 30 points matters. If you want to start being serious about events, you will care about the percentage points. You will care about sending out these these shuttles with these minor differences that will make the difference. Big would and he's got a but, but But does, does he have a shrubbery? No, but he's got a dog. Who wants a shrubbery when you can have a dog? <laughs> I don't think I want Big defending me uh, at at the stand. Well, no, I, you you can't you you can't fault any any of the points uh, that you're making for Picard. And 
like we've said, uh, the higher you are up the voyage rank, the slower you're going to fall. Um, but I think it, it does come back to it's how precious are your citations. And if you are the kind of person that is not going to come into them that often, I mean, you really do need to be uh, careful about how you use them. And if you can get more crew immortalized, because nothing's going to improve things more than getting them all the way up to fully fused. And if you, and the difference between two citations and four citations is massive. Um, especially if you don't have that many. So, um, I, I totally agree that in a vacuum, Picard is the better choice. Um, but if you're thinking about your budget, then you have to take savings where you can get them. Yeah. I'll have one final point, which is that, um, well, for two final points. One, Picard and number one, it's in the name, number one. Just saying. That's, kind that's, of that's an easy ration. That, that's, that's literally the game Objection. telling you which way to go here. <laughs> um, but the second point is, I noticed that you had him one out of five. And I was like, okay, well, that must mean he must have met Mr. Mega, right? And I find that in this game, there is a really pervasive feeling of FOMO or fear of missing out, right? And every time someone you know, takes a, a break from the game, they come back and they go, okay, what did I miss? Why, what campaigns did I miss? What Megas did I miss? And sometimes you come back and it's like, oh, who was the campaign crew? Dr. Chaotica and Taurus Trip Tucker. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really sad I missed out on that. Other times... You come back and you find that the number one Cybase with a top 10 voyage score was given out for free, four out of five. And that feels bad, man. Because everyone else has that leg up. If you want to get a leg up, it's hard to substitute this kind of raw power. There's a number one leg up joke in there somewhere. Uh, as the impartial <laughs> observer, I will uh, not throw in my support behind her, but will point out that out of all the characters in the game, only two of them have had more than 10 faction events in the history of the game. One is Janeway with 14, and the other is Kirk with 15. So those two names in terms of dependability to be able to thaw crew, to be able to use crew when they get bonus and not have them, you know, just chilling on your roster because it's a skirmish and you can't use them, and Janeway is one of the best. Now, speaking of Picards, next on the list, I have a crew who these two... Um, graciously allowed me to handle because they weren't 100% behind him. But let me make the case for Sinister Picard. Now, he's another Picard crew, a top top 10, I think top 5 Voyager at this point. Um, even with that skill set, with the, the, the rate at which he drops ranks is going to be very slow. This is a crew you will be using on Voyages in two years, even with that skill set. Um, and even if you were to cite Wrathful Kirk, who we recommended earlier, that would only give you four sec primary um, fused legendaries. Now, security is the number one most common seat um, from the data we, that we've tracked recently. Uh, number one or tied for number one with diplomacy. So even though he doesn't, his ranks may not be up there, the fact that you only have three, maybe soon to be four, fused security crew means Picard will find steady work for you. And never mind that he does get bonuses. He's had a couple faction events this year as well. Um, so as a package of event name plus voyages to get you through in between events, I think he's he's rock solid. Even with that skill set, the power more than compensates. Now, the next two I'm going to talk about are a bit of an odd one. But believe me, there's a thematic link here. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to try and sell you on the merits of Bones McCoy, who have three out of five, the one skill, not not complete awful. Like, for one skill, you usually think Captain Scott. This guy is a juggernaut. His lead over other med bases is Professor Sato-esque. And I'm pretty sure that's the only time in history that Professor uh, you know, Hoshi Sato will ever be used in a, a superlative adjective. Um, if you want to start competing in events, if you don't have strong med bases, he is the strongest med base. And especially in events where there's not a wide med um, event pool, like say a data event or even like a Picard event where one or two variants might have med. If you have like seating and you lack spaces to fill them, 
having that massive base lead can really help in terms of like your success percentages and in terms of freeing up crew for other slots for, for, for more versatility. Um, and the other one I want to talk about sort of tackles the same thing, which is Triple Herder Scotty at one out of five. Now, this guy is immensely voyage capable. I think he's number 22 voyager, so lucky number two, double. Um, he's a jury rigger, but I imagine by this point in the game, you're not too worried about that. But he has an, a wonderful skill set, end sec with a little bit of command on the end there, which is if you have them on the rest, um, determined Janeway on steroids, essentially. Now, Scotty doesn't pick up a lot of events, but what you will find is a triple herder has the, I think it's number two or number three end base. Lucky number two comes back again, yep. Number two. He's, he's a man of two, of two sides because you have that voyage credentials, but if you've ever heard anyone say, oh, well, I use Ada Rafu on, um, for his what, number one end base, voyage, uh, a tri a triple Scotty replicates almost exactly that power while not being a complete dunce on voyages. Like, the, the gap is 200 voyage ranks. You, you can't overestimate just how much of a difference that is. And even though Scotty is not by anyone's, like, metrics, a massive event performer, you can't overstate how useful it is to just go, you know, I'm just going to throw a big ed throw a big edge sledgehammer at it. Just do it. It solves it. And now, I promised you there was going to be a thematic link here. They're both TOS bridge crew. So there you go. I brought it back in the end. <laughs> so let's transition well, from from who does number two work for to one of your um, favorite crew in the game who we somehow did not rank at the very bottom of the list. Now, this where they rank is, is going to be up to you how much you love them, but this is a crew that we all signed off that we said, yes, this can help your roster. Yeah, I, I have the extremely difficult task of selling you on a crew that you really want to cite already. So, uh, you know... <laughs> It's, this is very difficult for me, but if you went to the trouble of naming a crew specifically in, in your note, and I feel like we have to talk about them, and that's uh, Emperor Philip Giorgio, uh, who, if you look at the stats, is shouldn't really be at the top of anybody's uh, list just on statistics. Uh, Voyage ranked around 200, uh, not a lot of ancillary benefits but uh, you know this is a good time to talk about the fact that one of the things that will keep your interest in this game is going after a crew you love not necessarily just going after numbers all the time because that gets old and if you have cards that you like that you want to see that you want to use more often then that's going to be something that you know drives your interest and, and keeps things going for you but that's not to say that uh, Emperor Giorgio doesn't have benefits. Uh, and right now, she in this uh, Mirror Mega, she's a, a prime command option, which there really aren't many. Uh, and there's plenty of potential for, I mean, we don't really know how the, the disco event thing is happening. We're, we're assuming that that's pretty much over and done with now, but she's also got... A uh, new spinoff series in the works, uh, and so there's still plenty of prime opportunities for her to get events. And then she's also uh, in the uh, Smoke and Mirrors collection that just came out recently. And if you've looked at the options that are out there for the Smoke and Mirrors collection to to sign up to finish that collection, it gets really ugly really fast. So any card that has any kind of benefits at all that is worth citations you just like and would cite, uh, you know, your mirror wharves and whatnot, uh, then you do it. You, because, yeah, <laughs> cite the card you love. You love Mirror Giorgio. Do it. Now, I have to say, as we look through the list, uh, one of the things you pointed out to us was that you like Discovery, um, and you, it's a big player. You like the season as it's going on, you like Giorgio. So as we look through your command crew, you have First Officer Burnham finished, great card, superlative, um, big disco command. But we looked for Discovery Crew going down your command list, page three, page four. You have no one else right now for Discovery Command. And even if that doesn't mean no blanket bonuses for Mega, 
those crew will still get standalone bonuses. Giorgio, along with Burnham, are really the only two crew that are sort of head and shoulders above the rest of the cast, above your, your Tillies and Stamets and whatnot. And they also get variant bonuses too. So even if the blanket bonuses are done, you'll use her. You'll use her in mirror events like the current Mega, and she does it that collection, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, this one's a bit... Another, I'm getting I'm going to have another twofer, but this one is an interesting one where... You want to, you're talking about uh, competing in events, and the command bases are a bit of an odd animal, and they don't tend to give out particularly good ones that often. Like we've had Booker and Grudge, we've had Sahil, but if you have a look at them Voyage metrics, they're not particularly impressive. But the two names I'm about to talk about are quite impressive, and that's Vice Admiral Janeway and Marquis Te Takeover Seski, who I was very pleased to see you had um, acquired from a recent event. Um, now, Vice Admiral Janeway, I cited from one out of five on my own roster. And in terms of Janeway command, there just isn't a lot of options there. There's, there's some real garbage like Katrine and some related Janeway secondary. But Vice Admiral Janeway isn't just good among Janeways. She's good, period. I believe she's still the number three command base. She will get event use and factions. Command Eng is a depreciated stack where you either have someone superstars or you don't. Um, she'll be able to fill in there. She's got some nice, interesting traits, um, like a Maverick and Gambler, which I feel like there's some prime material for event work there. Um, but on the flip side, you've got Marky Takeover Seska, and I'm pretty sure we're tapped out on Seska variants. Like, unless we get, like, assimilated Seska, we're not seeing a lot more in terms of variant <laughs> events. But if you look at her trait credentials... I can't think of many people outside of maybe one or two spots who have a more cast iron, these will see work traits. She's got Hologram, Marky, uh, Bajoran, Cardassian, um, Saboteur. Like, all of these feel prime for God knows how many events down the road. Even if they're only one of us, you will see them plink up, go, 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 and you will need a big command base. A top 10 command base in all of these pools is going to pay off. And it's only a question of if it's going to pay off three times, four times, five times, it's going to pay off. And at, I think Voyage around about 67, she, you will see her being used in Voyages as well. She's not purely an event name. She manages to straddle the best of both worlds. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, sorry. <laughs> I mean, best of both worlds flashback. <laughs> uh, now, we did talk about Sesk recently um, on Timelines Talks, and to my memory, she's the number one command base for every single trait except, I think, villain. She's right behind mm. uh, Wraith Keiko, who, you know, sets the bar. And then on the other hand, as I mentioned earlier, Janeway, number two in number of faction events by a pretty wide margin. So if you're looking for event help, like Star says, it's it's a different path. That Seska's a little more risky, but she could pay off in big chunks over a mega instead of more spread out like Jane will hit. Now that was our top ten, but we all agreed we couldn't go without an honorable mention to one other crew who I I don't think I've ever heard anyone say anything negative about. And now that's mostly on voyages, but he's got some good traits, he's a good all rounder. Big sell us on stranded quark. Well, as you say, I don't really have to sell it all that much because there's there's never I I've never heard anyone say, "Man, I really regret citing up that stranded quark." Uh, you know, everybody is is short on Eng Med uh, relative to other skills, and he's one of the ones that can beef that up. But if we're going to stick with the theme of events. Uh, I I still think that Quark is a fairly reliable event name. Uh, I mean, he did have the section there where he kind of fell off the face of the earth after coming into a lot of events. I, I want to say a couple of years ago, but there are there are going to be Quark events, and there are going to be uh, you know Quark rerun events, and uh, you know they're going to force cling on Quark on us again at some point. Um, again, I'm sure, but uh, but when those events come and, you know, any kind of Ferengi events, things like that. Diplomacy is going to be very needed and best to have a crew that you've got top of mind because you're using them on voyages all the time anyway. And that's going to be Stranded Quark. And I think uh, he's got some some good traits 
uh, things like that that could hit some one-offs here and there. But again, you really don't need to sell him all that much because he's still a Voyage superstar and you're not going to regret signing him. Plus, you've got him at 2 of 5 already anyway. So again, saving some saving some sights. So, yeah. So this concludes the... Um, the big ticket and top man whose name we completely mangled already a few times. Um, there's citation advice segments. I wouldn't know anything about mangling <laughs> names at all. No, thank, you, thank you, big, large, Mitch McHuge. Um, <laughs> and anyone who's been just listening along, trying to get and pick up little bits and pieces for their own roster, don't hesitate. You guys can contact us on Discord, on the forums. You can leave a comment below. If you guys want help, um, my spidey senses are tingling that with Christmas and Convergence Day coming up, we may be getting another honor sale. Um, and so that's why we like to give you a nice long list so that you're never without someone uh, in the hopper ready to go, ready to fuse up and help your roster. So thank you, Big Ticket and Top Man, for submitting your rosters, and we hope this helped you out. So we'll see you guys next time on the Citation Advice Show.